Hi, I'm Andy, and in this video we'll be exploring how to attack, detect and defend against desktop session hijacking. Windows allows for multiple users to be logged in at the same time. Only one user can be physically sat in front of a machine at once, so if another user wants to use the same machine, then the original user must either log out to terminate their session and apps, or use the switch user feature which keeps their apps running in the background whilst the second user does their thing. We can see from the task manager here that the previous user's session still exists, waiting for them to return. Sessions can also be listed via the command line using the QUser command. Windows 10 Pro and Enterprise, and Windows Server, also allow for users to connect remotely over a network via remote desktop protocol. However, artificial restrictions are put in place to limit the number of active sessions based on license. By default, when a user closes an RDP connection, or if it gets dropped due to a network error, the desktop session continues to run uninterrupted. A user can reconnect and continue where they left off. Actually, logging off their desktop session is of very little benefit to a user, but, as we'll see in this video, leaving sessions running provides an attacker with a great vector for achieving lateral movement across a network. Windows generally does a good job at keeping users' sessions separate from each other, and will only allow a session to be created or resumed once a user has been properly authenticated, although this can be bypassed by a user who is able to elevate their access to system-level privileges. This is fairly easy once admin access has been achieved, and I've covered several options to do this previously, including through Windows services or through the abuse of accessibility tools, so I'll not dwell on the topic here. Whatever way an attacker chooses, they can then hijack another user's session, regardless of whether it's sitting in the background or if it's being actively used, by using the tscon command and specifying the target session ID number. Note how there is no request here to enter any credentials. An attacker can now continue using their victim session without any knowledge of their password. That was pretty quick, so let's see that again in action. As soon as the tscon command is executed, the current session is immediately switched to the victim's no password entry necessary. This technique doesn't just work where an attacker has access to a local machine. It also applies to cases where an attacker is connected remotely over RDP. The process is almost identical, however the attacker must also specify a reference to their own RDP session as the destination for the hijack. Some of you may be thinking, so what? What's so good about being able to assume the identity of another user? After all, the attacker had just achieved system level access before the session hijack, you can't get much better than that, so surely this is a step down in terms of access. Well, whilst that's true in the context of this particular endpoint, remember that part of the victim's user session includes their cached credentials. So that means the attacker now has free reign to move laterally across any of the other network resources and systems that the victim may have access to. For example, Imagine if the attacker had obtained their original access via a locally defined administrator account. Their access would be limited to just that machine. However, a session hijack could then grant them access to a domain account, thus providing a method to then connect to other machines within the domain. And in server environments, most RDP sessions are likely to be administrative users who have admin level privileges over many, if not all servers in a domain. Reviewing the logs associated with session theft reveals nothing that remarkable at first glance. The Terminal Services Local Session Manager log records a few events associated with the switching of one session to another, including Event ID 25, Remote Desktop Session Reconnection Succeeded, which includes the user whose session has just started. Despite the name, this event is also present where a local session is re-established too, not just RDP connections. But the events recorded for a session hijack are exactly the same as what's recorded for a genuine user switch. A look at the security event log for the same period shows numerous events for a genuine user switch, but only a small number of events for a session hijack. In particular, as a session hijack does not involve the authentication of a user's credentials, remember it just jumps straight into the victim session, there is no associated event ID 4624, 
which records a successful logon. So, whilst there's no easy to consume single event which indicates session hijacks, they can be detected by correlating events in a seam, based on the presence of local session manager event ID 25 and the absence of an associated security event ID 4624 at the same time for the same username. Additional detection controls could be established by monitoring any execution of the TSCon process, here using Sysmon. Although, as this tool itself is not inherently malicious, it could be used in some environments for entirely innocent purposes. A few measures can be put in place to help reduce the risk of desktop session hijacking, depending on the scenario. Disabling remote desktop on devices where it's not required eliminates the RDP component of this attack technique altogether. In cases where it's absolutely necessary, group policy options help mitigate the risk, specifically those in computer configuration, administrative templates, Windows components, remote desktop services, remote desktop session host, and then under session time limits. Here, several time limits can be established for active sessions, idle sessions, and disconnected sessions. The latter is particularly effective to defend against this technique, as disconnected sessions could otherwise remain running for many weeks or months. The end session when time limits reached must also be activated for any of these timeouts to be effective. Note how this user session is now automatically terminated after a minute of existing in the disconnected state. For further RDP protection, look to upgrade to Server 2019. Microsoft seems to have made a code change for this most recent edition of the OS, which neuters the RDP variant of this attack technique by always enforcing a password entry, even when switching sessions via TSCon. Note that this improved behaviour currently only exists on Server 2019, and it does not provide any protection for attempts to exploit this technique from the server's console. But that about wraps up this video. If you found it useful, please do give it a like, and consider subscribing if you want more of this sort of content. Drop a note in the comments if there's anything you think I missed around attacking, detecting and defending against desktop session hijacking, or if you have a good idea of what topic I should cover next. I'll see you next time.